Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and today is just gonna be an inference locking practice session. Yeah, so uh, nothing earth shattering today. I'm gonna take an example that we have in our SketchUp Campus course. And we have a course on inference locking if you're not familiar with it so you can learn the basics. And then we have this example we're gonna look at, which is uh, building this roof using inference locking. And we're just gonna do it kind of differently than we do in that session. Some will be the same, some not, but it's just a, uh, a way to practice a technique, in this case, inference locking. I find sometimes the best thing to do is just give yourself a challenge, limit yourself to say just the pencil and the move tool and see what you can get done. That's kind of what this is all about. So let's jump in. Um, in the example file, we, I, we have these two um, blocks. This is the finished example file then this is where you start from. And in the campus course, one of the things that uh, we do is use, uh, for example, the protractor tool to help create some of these angles and uh, build from there. I think this time, let's just recreate some of this because we have this, let's just build over here um, using information that we have here. Just as, again, it's just a different way than we do it in the campus course, but it's still good practice. So I know that this, for example, starts at the midpoint, this line. Let's start here. So I'm gonna start a line, draw in the blue direction, and I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock. Again, if you're not familiar with inference locking, please see some of our other videos or our campus course. But I'm gonna lock and then click here to get the correct height. And then I will just simply draw down. And then from here, I will draw across, lock the green direction, which I could also do with the arrow keys. Click here, and then that one was easy to finish. Now, I'm gonna, you know, recreate this part of the roof. So, I'm gonna hover on this edge and hold the shift key. Now I'm locked to that edge. So I'm gonna start my drawing, my point from somewhere on this edge. I'm still holding the shift key and I'm gonna hover on this point. Click, and that starts from that point. Now where is this gonna to go to? Well, I'll hover over this surface, lock to that surface. So again, I'm holding the shift key and then I'm gonna Come over here again referencing our model and you can see it snaps where that surface and that edge would would align and then I will hold down here again lock to that edge and find where that surface should meet up okay so just using inference locking uh, locking to existing points or uh, existing surfaces. So I should be able to erase that. If I use the move tool here, I can move this back. Again, lock that green direction and lock it to here. From here, we could draw this red edge in, but we don't know how far. Now, obviously I could just copy this edge, measure it, do something like that. But let's continue our inference locking practice. Um, and we should be able to learn what this is by recreating some of this geometry here. So we can, again, find the midpoint, draw in the blue direction, maybe I'll tap the up arrow key and lock it to there. So we know that height is correct. In fact, we could use the move tool, move that back, tap the left arrow key to lock the green direction. And so we know that's correct too. Now from here, I'm going to just draw this edge in because that will give us the correct surface angle, the same as this one. And then I can start a line, hover up here, for example, lock to that edge. So I'm holding the shift key 
And then as I hover over this surface, it's going to jump to that point. Alternatively, I could also do the exact opposite where I just hover over this surface, find that blue on face, hold the shift key so it's locked, and then move up to the surface. Sa doing the same thing, uh, not surface, this edge. But again, just using inference locking, locking to edges and to surfaces. Now we'll finish that one out and this roof should be done. We can just add in a few edges here. And we should be able to. Oh, you can see what I've done there is I did not draw this edge back. So in fact, this surface is not correct, but we're just gonna fix that really quick. I will draw this edge, lock to the green to here, do the same thing we just did, but this time I've got that little bit of an edge. So I'll lock to this surface, find this, and that should be what we needed. And that's a, that, I mean, that's perfect. That's the point, right? We're trying to recreate this using inference locking, had a little bit of a mistake, so we could also fix it with inference locking. Um, this part let's will be a mix of using some of the techniques that we use in the campus course and maybe some of these references over here. I want to start this edge. Now, a simple way to do that is I could simply select this edge, use the move tool, and move a copy lock that blue direction and move it up. But let's say we're trying to restrict ourselves to the line tool. So instead I will hover over this edge, hold the shift key to lock that or the up arrow, and then hover up here on the surface, click somewhere there. And that will start that edge from where that edge and that surface meet. Then I'll find the red direction and lock it And instead, again, in the campus course, we use the protractor to create some of these angles, but we're just gonna use, so I'll lock the blue direction to find the height here, and do the same here and here. Now that I have that, I could lock it there. Now that's one, um, we can build some of this out differently. So let's uh, start an edge, let's say from here, lock it, and then again, find back here to where it meets up, which is actually should be the same as this wall. And then we can hover the blue direction because we're, right now we're up in the air and find where it meets the surface creating just that small edge. Now here, this should be interesting. We don't have all the information over here yet, and I'm not sure if we'll get it, but let's, we, we do know a couple things. We know this uh, is one nice surface. So let's start here. Let's just say, I'm gonna, draw out here some distance, I don't know how far yet, and then move up in the blue direction. We do know that we want that to be the ridge line. Now we don't know exactly where it is at this point, but we do know that if we create this surface back here, so I'll use the green direction, lock both of those to that surface. So if we create that, that should give us the ability to keep going and i'm trying to think of what we need to do is create a surface here that will find uh, 
I'm wondering if I have enough information. <clears throat> because I, I know from the, the course, this is 30 degrees and, um, well, we have this. Actually, this should help us. We know from the course that we want the other side to line up here. So I'm just going to hover. And that's as far as that goes. Now, we don't know quite where this midpoint is yet. But we do know that we can pull this edge up this far, then find the green direction. Now the protractor tool would, all we need to do is use the protractor tool to find that 30 degree angle. And that would give us all the rest of the information we need. Um, I'm trying to think of, could we still get away without using the protractor tool? Sometimes, and probably we could, <laughs> I'm trying to think in real time here. And I think at this point, it would be simpler just to, to use it in there. Um, oh, you know what we can do? Uh, this will seem obvious to some of you, but I didn't, now that we have this edge, we simply need to lock here and find out where this would come over in the red direction, right? That's all we need is that point right there. We bring that forward and that will give us the rest of the information. So that um, it's arbitrary. It's not how you would build a typical roof. The whole point of that was just to say, can we build this roof that in our campus course we built using the protractor and some known angles? In our case, can we build the same thing trying not to use the, the protractor tool and using just the line tool and inference locking and we use the move tool a little bit? Um, challenge yourself to do that from time to time, just to see if you can push your knowledge of inference locking or other techniques farther than you have in the past. Little exercises like that. Okay, that was that was pretty straightforward. And I apologize, I was sort of fumbling around a little bit. But the truth is, I thought, let me go into this unprepared. And we'll go through it together because again, that's the point. It's just an exercise where you sort of work through it and be like, if I restrict myself to certain tools, what can I still do based on the information I have? A useful challenge again for just sort of building out some of those techniques. Please uh, try it on your own. Just create some of your own examples. Let us know, you know, uh, what you think or, or if you have different ideas on how this could be done then uh, challenge yourself to do so. As always, leave us your feedback. We'd love your, your comments and your suggestions, especially for future videos or, or techniques that we can cover, ideas that we can explore. Uh, we'd love to have that dialogue with you. And otherwise, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so for we release this stuff out on a very frequent basis. So come back, keep learning. We'll see you next time. Thanks, y'all.